Hello, and welcome to the Let's Read portion of the show, where we take a moment to appreciate the literature of Skyrim. Today, we will be reading Ancestors and Dunmer. Ancestors and Dunmer, an outdated guide for foreign visitors to Morrowind. Ghosts walk among them. The departed spirits of the Dunmurray, and perhaps those of all races, persists after death. The knowledge and power of departed ancestors benefit the bloodlines of the Dunmurray houses. The bond between the living family members and immortal ancestors is partly blood, partly ritual, partly volitional. A member brought into the house through marriage binds himself through ritual and oath into the clan, and gains communication and benefits from the clan's ancestors. However, his access to the ancestors is less than his offspring, and he retains some access to the ancestors of his own bloodline. The Family Shrine Each residence has a family shrine. In poor homes, it may be no more than a hearth or alcove where family relics are displayed and venerated. In wealthy homes, a room is set aside for the use of the ancestors. This shrine is called the Waiting Door and represents the door to oblivion. Here, the family members pay their respects to their ancestors through sacrifice and prayer, through oaths sworn upon deities, and through reports on the affairs of the family. In return, the family may receive information, training, and blessings from the family's ancestors. The ancestors are thus the protectors of the home, and especially the precinct of the waiting door. The Ghost Fence It is a family's most solemn duty to make sure their ancestors' remains are interred properly into a city of the dead, such as Necrom. Here the spirits draw comfort from one another against the chill of the mortal world. However, as a sign of great honor and sacrifice, the ancestor may grant that part of his remains be retained to serve as part of a ghost fence, protecting the clan's shrine and family precincts. Such an arrangement is often part of the family member's will that a knuckle bone shall be saved out of his remains and incorporated with solemn magic and ceremony into a clan ghost fence. In more exceptional cases, an entire skeleton or even preserved corpse may be bound into a ghost fence. These remains become a beacon and focus for ancestral spirits, and for the spirits of the remains in particular. The more remains used to make a ghost fence, the more powerful the fence is, and the most powerful mortals in life have the most powerful remains. The great ghost fence created by the tribunal to hold back the blight incorporated the bones of many heroes of the temple and of the house is Induril and Redron, who dedicated their spirits to the temple and clan as their surrogate families. The ghost fence also contains bones taken from the catacombs of Necrom and the many battlefields of Morrowind. The Mortal Chill Spirits do not like to visit the mortal world and they do so only out of duty and obligation. Spirits tell us that the other world is more pleasant, or at least more comfortable for spirits than our real world, which is cold, bitter, and full of pain and loss. Mad Spirits Spirits that are forced to remain in our world against their will may become mad spirits or ghosts. Some spirits are bound to this world because of some terrible circumstance of their death, or because of some powerful emotional bond to a person, place, or thing. These are called hauntings. Some spirits are captured and bound to enchanted items by wizards. If the binding is involuntary, the spirit usually goes mad. A willing spirit may or may not retain its sanity. Depending on the strength of the spirit, and the wisdom of the enchanter. Some spirits are bound against their will to protect family shrines. 
This unpleasant fate is reserved for those who have not served their family faithfully in life. Dutiful and honorable ancestral spirits often aid in the capture and binding of wayward spirits. These spirits usually go mad and make terrifying guardians. They are ritually prevented from harming mortals of their clan, but that does not necessarily discourage them from mischievous or peevish behavior. They are exceedingly dangerous for intruders. At the same time, if an intruder can penetrate the spirit's madness and play upon the spirit's resentment of his own clan, the angry spirit may be manipulated. Oblivion The existence of oblivion is acknowledged by all Tamriel cultures, but there is little agreement on the nature of that other world, other than it is the place where the Adra and Daedra live, and that communication and travel are possible between this world and oblivion through magic and ritual. The dumber do not emphasize the distinction between this world and oblivion, as do the human cultures of Tamriel. They regard our world and the other world as a whole, with many paths from one end to the other, rather than two separate worlds of different natures with distinct borders. This philosophical viewpoint may account for the great affinity of elves for magic and its practices. Foreign Views of the Dunmurray Ancestor Worship and Spirit Magic The Altmurray and Bosmurray cultures also venerate their ancestors, but only by respecting the orderly and blissful passage of these spirits from this world to the next. That is, Wood Elves and High Elves believe it is cruel and unnatural to encourage the spirit of the dead to linger in our world. Even more grotesque and repugnant is the display of the bodily remains of ancestors in ghost fences and ash pits. The presentation of finger bones in a family shrine, for example, is sacrilegious to the Bosmer, who eat their dead, and barbaric to the Altmer, who inter their dead. The human culture of Tamriel are ignorant and fearful of dark elves and their culture considering them to be inhumane and evil, like orcs and Argonians, but more sophisticated. The human population of Tamriel associate Dunmurray ancestor worship and spirit magic with necromancy. In fact, this association of the Dark Elves with necromancy is at least partially responsible for the dark reputation of the Dunmur throughout Tamriel. This is generally an ignorant misconception, for necromancy is outside the conceptible clan ritual in a most abhorrent abomination in the eyes of the Dunmer. The Dark Elves would never think of participating sorcerous necromancy upon any Dark Elf or upon the remains of any Elf. However, Dark Elves consider the human and orcish races to be little more than animals. There is no injunction against necromancy upon such remains, or on the remains of any animal, bird, or insect. Imperial policy officially recognizes the practice of Dunmurray ancestor veneration and spirit magic as a religion, and protects their freedom to pursue such practices so long as they do not threaten the security of the empire. Privately, most imperial officials and traders believe the Dark Elves' ancestor worship and display of remains are barbaric or even necromantic. Telvanni Necromancy The Telvanni are adept masters of necromancy. They do not, however, practice necromancy upon the remains of Dark Elves. St. Telvanni regards such practice with loathing and righteous anger. They do practice necromancy upon the remains of animals and upon the remains of humans, orcs, and Argonians, who are technically no more than animals in Morrowind. Publisher's Note This book was written by an unknown scholar as a guide for foreign visitors to Morrowind shortly after the armistice was signed. 
Many of these practices have since fallen into disfavor. The most obvious changes are those regarding the practice of necromancy and the great ghost pens. Dunmer today regard necromancy upon any of the accepted races as an abomination. The ghost fence has forced many changes in the practice of ancestor worship. With the vast majority of ancestors' remains going to strengthen the great ghost fence around the mountain of Dagoth Ur, there are very few clan ghost fences in Morrowind. The temple discourages such practices among the houses as selfish. The upkeep of family tombs and private wedding doors has also fallen into disfavor, as very few remains have been buried in these tombs and shrines since the armistice. In recent years, most Dunmer venerate a small portion of their ancestors' remains kept at local temple. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Shadows Let's read the books of Skyrim.